Namaste. Welcome to my humble abode. <laughs> and I see we have Karen here. It's been quietly sitting there in your little corner on my screen. You're sitting in the corner. Were you a bad girl? <laughs> I haven't been. I'm so excited. Like, you know, what can I say? We've got things materializing in this vortex here in and out. I don't know. Yeah. 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 That's pretty wild. We've been so having some very, we'll just say, interesting intergalactic surges. There is nothing behind here but a solid wall. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's... And you can see pictures of me that are being imprinted now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's not me. That's being superimposed in behind my field right now. It's been happening on a lot of the guest shows I've done lately. Look at your eye. I know. Yeah, yeah I was going to say what's going on with the eyes. I was going to actually it's bring field. that up. Huh? Yeah, it's, a field. it's a field. There's something materializing and dematerializing. You guys want to see yeah, something? Yeah, I see that. Can I show you guys something really freaky? Yeah. <laughs> you guys More than this? Yeah. <laughs> That's better, Greg. <laughs> I've got the biofeedback, the genius biofeedback on in here. So it's creating some... Look at that. As I put something solid, I brought it... That's an iPad. You're seeing through it. What the... Okay? I, I joke not. Look at... What the hell is going on there? I know. That's what you get for being a clown mother, right? Here's the mirror. Okay. Look what happens when I put it to the back side. Holy. Front of the mirror. Look at the back. Interdimensional stuff is happening now. Break it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's something very galactically pretty cool interdimensionally. And look at that's the back side of the mirror. You can actually see right through. What do you think is going on? What was my thought? I was doing a client with the biofeedback from Genius the other day, which I do, right? Quantum medicine, right? And um, I was talking with the Commander Chief Patty Broussard where we did project incension and all those things right she was responsible for the looking glass technology this is what this is this is the whole trump q and stuff right and um she said it's emerging and the timelines coming back in that they're trying to show people in frequency dimensions behind me or with me so anyone that walks into this field right now is literally being re-energized it feels like electrified out here so when i did my genius and i did the I said, I can't even show you an iPad almost. Do you know what I mean? It's like particulating behind it. You know, um, my genius aura now has gone all hot pink. So that's obviously it's got something to do with it now. Because it, it's like I said, the, the aura is kind of off the charts now. It's like really hot pink now, pink. So uh, that's my <laughs> ad too. So if anyone wants that, geniusbiofeedback.com, we're teaching. But yeah, um, yeah, this Tesla field or whatever we're creating, the vortex here is having spontaneous healing. So as a nurse, I think it's quite exciting. But uh, that's my new thing. So I developed a COVID corona and a COVID-17 also remedy, like a, a biofeedback rife zapper off of this. So we can test for it appropriately and we can get the field up like that, obviously. And it's just re-energizing, remagnifying the field. And we don't have any viruses, so to speak, or bacteria for that matter. But yeah, here's, there's mine. I don't know if you can see enough. It's a hot pink. Yes. Yeah. Well, there, see, and that there's nothing behind me but a white wall. So how is this stuff being interposed? Now, the funny thing is, I will just take the, the video off for a second. That's not a picture that I'm using. That's the old picture from like 10 years ago. So that's being su superimposed somehow in the field, which is kind of wild. So I don't know. There, starting up again. 
How's that for funky? I'm here and I'm not here. <laughs> Are you going to just disappear and go into the fifth dimension? I already passed it. So as a clan mother, that's, that's white bear Octarian technology. So, yeah. So that's wow. my fun. So, but yeah, so I've been doing a lot of healing and doing this. I'll be doing a club 144 doing guest interviews and TV and radio. And then also bringing in, um, I mean, everyone wants these, you know, bioacoustical zappers. I mean, we all know you can oscillate any virus, right? It's about the toxicity, you know, and I always laugh as a nurse. I'm going, we've got to stop the mask thing. You know, you're breathing in your own toxins. You're breathing in chemicals, food dye coloring blue and yellow, and you're reinfecting everything. So, and I know up here in Saskatoon, I want people to be very clear. I was briefed by Commander Broussard and other people, um, Gene, the decoders and stuff. We are getting sonic booms in Saskatoon. So we've actually had apartment buildings actually shaking. And uh, that's getting to be very common. And I've been briefed as well. These are the direct energy uh, tactical nukes that they're using to shut down the bases for the child trafficking. So we should be celebrating every time we hear a boom or from the thermal scan. If you're on my uh, Karen McDonald Facebook, take a look at the thermal imaging that they gave me permission to put out. So it's happening and we're pretty excited. So. All I can say, it's the time to celebrate right now. It really is, you know, That's and an you know, update. yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like we're defragging, right? So, right. yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're having so much fun in Saskatoon. We don't know what to do the, as the snow melts. Apparently so am I, I don't know. <laughs> That's cool. I'm, I'm sorry. I had to put everyone else on, on mute just so she could tell her story un uninterrupted. You guys are all unmuted again though. So yeah. I, I just really I tried mine. Uh, is that the color you just show up by chance? The one the card she has up. That's me. That's me. No, no, I'm talking about the color of it. Um, that yeah. um. She, yeah, it looks like the iPad. So I was telling my mom last week that spirit came to me and told me that because she wasn't believing all these things that were happening to me, mm -hmm. I said, um, spirit told me that because you don't believe in me and it takes seeing to believe for you uh, that now is the time for you to see. And I didn't know what it was, what it was saying, what it, we're coming from. But two days later, my mom came by and um, as her and I were talking, right as I'm looking at her to the left or right, her left side of her head, Mm -hmm. There was, and I'll tell you, it was like a, the size of a small house, garage. Yeah. a big, gigantic circle of purple smoke, but it was all like a, a violet, pink, purple, and my mom seen it as well, and it just lingered there mm -hmm. for at least a good 30 to 60 seconds as we sat there going, what in the world is that? And I, <laughs> For me, my mom was in out and I... For me, it was like, I knew it, my told you, they were going to show you. And out of nowhere, it just started to load away. And we watched it go as far east as it can go till we didn't see it anymore. But it was the exact same color that you pulled up. And it really freaked me out because, yeah, that it was an unexplainable thing. And I didn't yeah. want to share it with no one because it's kind of hard to believe. I get it. But so sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt, but... No, I um, love that. That's a great story. <laughs> I, I have exactly the same. That's my aura of photo. Can you hear me? <gasps> That's me. That's beautiful. Yeah. That was about five years ago, four or five years ago. Hmm. <laughs> That was a stunning picture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's amazing to have those auras that look that beautiful. Yeah. That's, that's, I know. Yeah. I know. It blew me away. It blew the person away that actually took that as well. And they were like, I've not seen that before. A mm -hmm. whole same color of that. Yeah. So, yeah. You should just, at this point, you should just grow some wings, angel wings, and a halo. <laughs> So, I already, they're already there, they're already there, as yours are, as everyone, <laughs> as our, all of us, we've just forgotten that we've all got them. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, that's that three, six, nine energy flow is our angel wings. Beautiful. Wow. 
we've gone there. So that's cool. But I'm just blown away by that technology. I'm quite blown away. And I'm so excited about the news of the sonic booms and the bombing and because that's been really on my heart a little bit lately. Mm. Well, a lot. So to and I've been getting updates. Um, but I'm just really excited to know that, you know, to hear some more good updates. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's always good to have positive news, especially in that area where you know, those oh, kids totally. deserve what they're going through. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Stephen, you're new here. here. Stephen Mitchell. Hi there, Greg. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Thank you for Thank joining you. us. Yeah. Glad to uh, come along. All right. Hi, everyone else. <laughs> Glad you can make it. So, yeah, oh, you're, no. <laughs> you're, you're coming in from uh, England as well. Yes, I'm in the uh, south of England, uh, just uh, having a nice relaxing evening. I've been watching you all. It's been really, really interesting to, tonight to uh, just sit and watch and listen. Yeah, we learn something new every day. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for uh, joining yeah, us. Yeah, not just getting used to participating. Yes. Yes. Many of us are introverts. And there's a lot of people that are watching on YouTube that still haven't <laughs> joined us, but have been watching since like day one. So. Yeah, well, I've been watching on YouTube for quite a well, the last few days, and I've, I've really enjoyed it. Good. Good. Interesting stuff. So you learn something new every day, don't you? If you don't learn something new every day, you're not doing something right. Right. I would agree. Right now I'm learning from Karen about this interdimensional stuff that's going on in, in her background. It's quite fascinating. It's amazing. Oh, that was, that was just brilliant. Exciting. Anyway, I'll let you get on for a moment while I have a bit of a refresher. All right. So what, what more do you have to add there, Karen? Oh my gosh, what is, where do you want to start? <laughs> I don't know. Where do you want to um, go? I've had some really exciting news too, also by um, some of the different peoples in the in the forces and stuff. Um, Patty Broussard, like I said, she's Gaia Shaman, if people want to, she's coming back onto Facebook. Um, we were actually Project Incension for many, many years on YouTube, and we've done a lot, but um, the entire... Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada, that, that network went right down and it looked like almost to the Denver because we had two things glowing on the thermal. And this week, half the, the planet looked like it was lit up. So, um, and I've also been disclosed that the children are being lifted off into biospheres right now. So the majority of them are going there because we do not have the capabilities of dealing with it here. There are very few of us that can. So this is why I was using that genius biofeedback to just, you know, use a scanner because I can do them from a distance, anyone remote or hook them up live. But um, yeah, this is where they're going to use this kind of technology up there because it's kind of like the hollow tech beds and all that. So regen beds. So yeah, that's the, I've got nothing but happy news. Like every time I hear a pop crackle. <laughs> so I think, um, Everything's getting like, you know, ramped up for this, right? We were prepared for this, you know? What's and going on with all really the exciting. Huh? What's, what's going on with all the UFOs that are above our planet right now? Um, in conjunction we had Patty Broussard open up the thermal. She also opened up the Soho and Lasco. Again, the non public one, right? This is the one that we can look at directly that she set up when she set up NASA. And um, we can see several cigar type ones. They're the palladium ones. They look like submarines. And several Octarian ships. So we have several on the West Coast right now and a couple on the East. And again, part of it's not just for child and protection, whatever. And we got some Lyrian ships as well. Is that because of the instability of the planet right now, we've got two North and two South Poles creating that pole shift. They're also providing some sort of a stabilization at this point. And I now know this is why. There's lots over the UK, especially Scotland and England right now, which is why they dispatched 30 some thousand troops, extra troops there right now. So most of this is underground, deep base uh, recovery, retrieval of the missing women and children. And again, with the hybridization, the torturization, um, um, you know, what they've been doing to these children and, and women is, you know, um, indictable really for, you know, 
acts of war trees and high trees. And so I'm very happy that we're starting seeing the ball rolling. I've been involved in this because my children were involved in this like 20 years ago. So it's just the fruit starting to come, come alive now. So. You know, yeah, this, uh, that's interesting that what you mentioned about the cigar shaped Pleiadian ships, because I've got these uh, night vision goggles. Yeah. And uh, about three years ago, I saw, I locked into the largest UFO ship I've ever seen right. with my night vision goggles. It was coming off the Gulf of Mexico, heading yeah. inland. And as soon as I locked <laughs> in on them, it disappeared. Uh, but I, I saw it long enough to see it, to see what I saw. It was huge. It was freaking huge. Biggest ship I've ever seen. By far the largest ship I've ever seen. These are, oh man, every time I want to show it to you, they're phasing it out. I can tell. Okay, back into here. This is kind of like our version of the Soho, but we actually have got galactic battleships up here, star systems. I don't know if they're going to let me get. Oh, yeah, I bring it up to the camera and they just take it right out. You can kind of see this white glow thing here, but these are at Project Incension. I get close within the camera, just the fields coming off of us. Is, and um, what it can show is these were 300 of the biospheres, 397 of them. There's 300 left. So about a quarter of the biospheres that came for rescue are now gone. And then these are all the satellites Patty was operating and the ones that were in the dark green. So we had a fairly decent take as to what was happening right now on the planet coming in and off. So that I can tell you, these are kind of the ships that we have up there. So we have everything from that to aftermath. So like I said, um, those are some of the bases. And Gene the decoder was briefed by Patty Brassard. And I think he's at McAllister TV. There's a blessed to teach was a little bit on the uh, Bible thinking, but McAllister TV, they have some of them there. Like this is the kind of stuff I have over Saskatoon on occasion. <laughs> They're hidden in roll clouds and stuff. So, you know, TR3Vs, I'm kind of used to that after all this, after all these years. So, <laughs> but yeah, I you saw, might want to take a look at that. I saw that cigar uh, UFO last summer. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when that happened, um, maybe, you know, there was, I had videoed it on my phone and when I watched the video and like zoomed in on different spots on it up away from that, there was these huge balls of light that were, they were like exploding just balls of light. Mm -hmm. And do you know what that would have been? A lot of them um, we see they'll have carriers and stuff with them. They've got plasma discharges too. So quite often when I got to see, I mean, I'm very privileged and honored. So I'm one of the few people outside of the you know, military with that kind of clearance to see this kind of stuff. But we could actually see from the secret extra seven international space stations, you would see a lot of these ships come by with a plasma field as well. So it could look orb-like. They can also have um, like carrier, like scout, like escorts as well. Um, my friend Gina Colvin Hill has got a lot on YouTube or on Facebook that she puts a lot of stuff out. Like in Salem, Indiana, she's kind of got like this, um, I call it, it's like almost like a portal there. And I've been picking up a lot of stuff all over right now. So, and I got, you know, with four Facebooks, I got enough stuff just like Greg, you got huge amounts of Intel coming in too. Um, everyone's starting to see them like Saskatoon. We've had quite a bit too. Like I've seen the huge battleships as well here. They're very common over the Cree reserves here. So a lot of the Indian reserves were our high traffic areas for abduction and for my lab. So I spend a lot of time assisting them with um, addiction and trauma recovery, post-traumatic stress, that kind of thing too. There's so, a comment here in the Zoom chat, group chat from, we'll just say somebody. I'm not going to re reveal her name because she doesn't want to come on. But uh, she said she's a province away in Alberta. Mm -hmm. And she's not heard any booms there, but she's getting much intel about the children. She's in communication with the GBBG private detective for the children. So yeah, there's I could address that. Thanks, Linda. Yeah, um, I was just in Calgary meeting with David Avocado Wolf. So I was in Calgary at the light cellar. So there's a lot of people around there. I deal with a lot of people all over. 
-hmm. and um, not far. In fact, I went through when the checkpoint stops with my own sovereign plates, by the way, on the way back to Saskatoon. How did that work um, out? Perfect. You know, they, they, I take the RCMP and have them take a look at my plates and make sure that the colors are nice enough for them to see. Um, but no, I, I am, as a climber, I have my own plates, right? I don't have, you know, Saskatchewan or Canadian plates. Um, in Alberta, yes, you are having them because I'm getting reports all the time. I just got a couple actually from Kelowna and I have a couple more from um, the Calgary. They were just seeing them. So along the stony uh, ring road. A lot of your ring roads are actually the access points to the deep underground military bases. They're covered for mini synchrotron CERNs or LHCs. And um, the only positive thing I've really heard, which is great, is in Banff, our, my essential oil guy, Tony at Nevesence Oils, was saying, it's great, it's quiet, and all the animals have come back into Banff. <laughs> We're being overrun by the animals here, the wildlife. So really great things are happening. But Alberta next to that, British Columbia, we've had lots in Manitoba as well and uh i know they're doing some in the underground you got to remember a lot of this is under the water so we have many in the oceans and also um in the under the great lakes so, so i've been here i've i've heard them here in iowa the sonic mm -hmm. booms for sure and ever since i have uh lived where i live which has been uh, 10 years now i've always said it sounds like there's underground explosions mm -hmm. and I've never figured out what it was. Yeah. Yeah. They use uh, tactical nukes here. It was so, actually it was kind of funny because my friend Kim dropped me off at, I don't know, about 11 o'clock on Sunday, um, almost a week ago. And at about two o'clock in the morning, she was woken, not only from the sound, but it shook the apartment building next to our exhibition grounds. And all of a sudden we've had a mysterious, almost 150 cars of Alberta and Saskatchewan plates show up in the middle of a, you know, empty exhibition fairgrounds. So, which we know are close to the access points into there. So they've been hearing it at night, you know, access shots and stuff. And again, it's not just our, um, what you call the Dundurn. We've got Camp Dundurn, which is an army base here. Um, but in Alberta, close to where she is. And of course, I love going to the light cellar because they always want me to teach there. But Malcolm Saunders, it's kind of like a David Wolf kind of a thing there. And the Heart Lodge, they have been shutting down actually, um, the girls would tell me some of the vitamin stores and the places I went to at Ozone, they're pulling them away there. So we're starting to get some of that friction starting to happen a little bit, but it's actually for the benevolence, it's it's actually pushing our natural paths and people that want to get off the grid to get off the grid. You know, so most of us are getting mobile right now, you know, getting campers and stuff like that. So I think that's really, really important right now. And I'm set up to go that way too, you know, um, that we need to be ready in, you know, I think all of that sort of anyway. I could. You've answered what, a lot of stuff for me. What um, what kind of uh, chance do these children actually have of leading a normal life, or what we th tend to think of as a normal life? Is the healing uh, going to help them at all? That's what I was thinking not on the in the way that you think like when i do trauma counseling or you know sexual abuse ritual abuse counseling this is not just a child that's been molested many of them have been like they do here for what they call military lab experiments i'm not sure if you're aware of the the totality the grossness of it that patty brassard's really put a lot of those pictures out and i'm talking like for the last five six eight years the project incension and other things she's done but when they've mixed our genes let's say because i'm rh positive i'm ab positive and she's our ZRZ positive back before the Mayans as well. When you mix our kind of bloods with some of these people, one, it can kill them too. They use it for hybridization and cloning. So there are children coming up, I've been told, with hooves. Um, they look like half animal, like cyclops, <sighs> things growing out of them like the Chimera Project. The Human Genome Project that they were doing this under the auspices called the NCBI or Project Panther is basically a Nazi type thing and offshoot. It's worse than, you know, MK Ultra and Paperclip. Um, Royal University of Saskatchewan is their Royal Draconian um, playground here for a lot, not just Monsanto. The headquarters where a lot of this stuff is around Saskatoon, by the way, because we had the second largest medicine wheel, Wanda Skaven. So they'd flip the ley lines here and we're, we're taking them back right now and resalinating these areas. 
the children themselves are tortured. Um, my contacts that have contacted me from the tent city, and I have contacts also on the Mercy and other areas, and I have contacts with people, if you're aware of um, the CIA headquarters, Langley, they do like Area 51, like Nightmare. So it's a total genetic abortion on what they've done to the children. So they're not just tasered and, and raped. They're actually genetically modified. So they've been injecting foreign DNA into these children. So they're so malformed. You couldn't have a semblance of a normal life. What we're happy to do, just sort of similar to this technology, like that I've developed with Ryan Williams at uh, Genius Health Insights and Dr. Ariel Policano is to try and get to the original DNA template, your mitochondrial DNA and RNA. And so we're hoping to chelate out or remagnetize. This is what we're doing here with that. Um, I've been doing, let's say, um, with Patty Broussard, regrowing after a hysterectomy at birth, her ovaries again. So it's kind of like stem cell regeneration. You could never be like that. My children were part of what they call the Martinsville thing, similar to here, with child abduction that they did. And, um, you know, putting the children in or putting clones back in their place, trying to abduct them. And the children will never be the same. You know, you can help to get them on, but we don't have the capabilities here. It's not just a matter of ventilation. And I'm a, a formal neonatal intensive care nurse. You know, they're not equipped for this kind of stuff. They, they're not even equipped for natural stuff, let alone what normal is. So even put the children into these kind of situations. That's why most of the military, uh, a lot of my friends that are military, um, nurses and people that have volunteered to go into these places to help them. And that's what the 397 biospheres were brought in for. Because if they're taken to Avalon or taken to different star systems of the primary origin of what they came from star seeds, they've got a much better shot at um, cleaning them up than we do. You know, and it's like Randy Kramer, right? You, you know, <sighs> they can be in wars up on Mars or whatever for 17 years and blow off an arm and have it regrow in three three hours, you know? Um, it's like any of us. I mean, if anyone's been raped or tortured or anything, or even just, you know, we know what even just verbal abuse and mental abuse is. You never really recover off that, you know? It, it, it's a stick, but to try and get rid of the discharge is the thing. So that's why I specialize in a lot of these, what you call yoni steams or vaginal steams for men and women, which by far has been the most effective thing I've found against Corona and COVID, by the way, <laughs> is to do the herbal steams. And, um, you know, getting that into the root chakra and almost regenerating that because you're on a bit of a lockdown that way and uh, with the 5G stuff. So, you know, all we can do is hope for the best and um, keep moving forward from this point and hope that the indictments all stick, you know, for the people that need to be held accountable for this and that we don't see it again. Because it is, it's a violating of act of wars and act of treason. It's a violation of all the proclamations of those of us that are clan mothers and tribe mothers that represent these territories on the on the planet. We've heard about these med beds, you know, mm -hmm. they've been talking about med beds. I don't know. I, I listened to Sam Muggsy and Ken Dunn. Ken Dunn said, the he's talking sector. about them. Yeah. yeah he's, I think he's full of hot air and BS myself, but um, yeah, there's two of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sam, on the other hand, I love, I think Sam's really cool. Kent, man. But uh, you know, they, there's talk about med beds and um, mm -hmm. you know, is that reality or, and if so, is that something that could help heal those children? I think that's a great question. Um, I haven't been in my, them myself, but I do know of the people involved in the making of them. And they, one is actually um, people like Randy Kramer, which is Captain K, um, Earth Defense Citizen um, in there. So he's a friend of mine as well. Uh, Dan Willis, different people like this that used to be in the old, you know, 5D events back then when we were doing this in 2011, 12, and 13. Mm -hmm. So, is it possible? Yes. I mean, to get to the original DNA, but you know, it's like growing a tail out of our, you know, and I do, I've had like Cynthia Maria Brewer. I've seen people that have been genetically abducted and they're trying to do this. So, and again, they're using it for cloning too, for their own nefarious purposes as well. The re regen beds, we have apparently several, I shouldn't say a lot. I've heard about four or five on the planet, but again, that's, you know, not only on the need to know, but it's on it who gets access to them. So they have been trying to, what's the word, recreate them because they cannot bring the technology out. Either they would be charged also for treason and high treason because of what they were doing with their notices and non disclosure. So that's why having people like Patty Broussard is very helpful because they never signed notices and non disclosure in the US Army or any of the third party contracts that they did. 
So it would be helpful, but we really don't have an awful lot here. So I have been told because of what's happened to them, um, you've had children, mothers, grandmothers, and great, great grandmothers all down there, multiple generations that have never seen the light of day. And because of the air conditions, we do have people that cannot actually even breathe this air because when they've been down in those kind of um, controlled environments that they were doing, we have many species that I know that, that they just can't thrive in this kind of thing. So they have to take them off there. Just like we've had people that have been apparently um, arrived on Mars or the moon colonies and stuff, and they can't bring them back down here either because of the change in the genetics and um, gravity pressures, magnetics, you know, um, that type of thing. So like total recall. this has never really quite happened at this extent. This is a massive undertaking everyone's done and that they have been understanding our original peoples properly, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that we, we're ever going to, you know, we're going to have to move on. You can't really recover from this. I know when it happened to my children initially 25 years ago, you don't get over this. You just don't. But well, when they make take sure the for children, next generation, it doesn't happen again. When they take the children, do they take them physically every time? Or do, do they take them, you, their body stays here and, you know, they, I don't it can know. Be, to... I know, I, I, I know what you're saying. It can be with or without the soul, with or without the physical body. So it depends on the type of abductions that they're doing. Um, most of them are physically actually taken down there. Plus they have clones. And part of the problem too is that we're developing a lot of the burning that you're seeing or earthquakes is due to also not just COVID is nothing. COVID-17, if you listen to Gene the Decoder and McAllister TV, you'll, you'll hear what we're doing. It's a bloodborne acquired thing that was put into the adrenochrome and is also through vaccine acquired. So it's a bloodborne thing, which is different than something that's bacteria airborne or something. Um, but when we got some of this, what they're really more concerned or discerning about, and that's why they're putting things on fire, is the Kuru. So if you look that up, it's K-U-R-U. And um, it, it's huge. It, it's acquired through the spirit cooking and, and the uh, adrenalization that they're eating off the children. So a lot of these children have been forced to live on human flesh cannibalized as well. So it, it's a multiple thing. There's no such thing. Everyone's a project down there to these, you know, psychopaths. And the nanotechnology and the AI comes into this as well. So they want everyone off the streets, one, to get what they need to do done, and two, to keep people clear off the streets. Because there's a lot of basis as they're cleaning them out. It feels like guacamole. <laughs> we don't know where they're going to show up like a gopher hole here. And um, trying to get it nailed down. What, so, what, what do you, you think is going to happen with these... Um celebrities that have been hooked on adrenochrome once they no longer are able to get adrenochrome what's going to happen to them physically well, i want them all indicted i mean from a clan mother perspective by international law for crimes this is act of war treason high treason but crimes against humanity so i've been talking with uh international tribunal judge uh alfred weber out of vancouver who was on the uh uh Lemper ones as well and they need to be indicted you know, there isn't such a thing as, you know, recoverable. Um, from my point of view, they're indicted. But I, I, I agree that the, they, they should all definitely be indicted. But yeah. what's going to happen to them physiologically? Um, what's going to happen to their bodies as, will they go through like withdrawal symptoms? Will they age um, significantly? Um, yeah, take a look at the Kuru. When you learn about what Kuru really does to these people, I mean, it, it's beyond insanity. You know, so it's not just an aging process and stuff, too. Um, they get into cloning, they're psychopaths, and I just assume they're indicted and they, they're dealt with in the appropriate courts. Well, that's and another really question. Death. It's a death penalty, really. That's another question, too, is um, yeah. you hear a lot of talk about, oh, you know, Obama's a clone, and this person's a clone, that person, the queen's a clone. Mm -hmm. Who's really a clone and who isn't? And how can, how can you tell? That's where some of the technology comes in that the... Um, that the military has access to. Okay, so as I've got stuff, I mean, I do some wild stuff, not only with the genius, because we're doing on so many things interdimensionally, right? It's not just aura scans I'm doing and, and rife and radionics. They have the technology to determine who's human and who's not. So um, I used to play with fun things, just like the, the ultraviolet lights, like using the black light and stuff, right? You can see how many people have been implanted when their um, pupils are changing color. For example, if you follow Dr. Catherine Horton at um, 007 and stuff. So a lot of the people that are into the 5G movement and 
and the uh, gang stalking and torturing, uh, they will be aware of that. So they have got special equipment where they can determine. They have been stopping here, I can tell, with special cameras. And the stop checks are not just stop checks and checking your plates. They've got special scanners now that they're using. Um, they have LIDAR. They have all sorts of things that they're technology. So when they create a blackout, they can actually see some of the hot spots as well. So if you power down a city, you can see the hot spots from another um, facility as well. So you, we'll see so much of that, you know. We have people in the Zoom chat asking, how do you spell Kuru? I don't I, spell, but K-U-R-U. <laughs> that's what I said, yeah. K-U-R-U. It's um, into here. Like the cloning... Like I said, the people that really know um, are the people on the inside on the dark net or the ACIO. And that's very difficult to access those kind of records. They're not available to the public at all. Okay. So, so we're never going to really, I think, know unless you're at that level. Even I get briefed more so when it happens. I've been told who's, they've got multiple clones. So it's not just a clone, they have multiple clones. So even as they try and get rid of some, they've had two Hillary Clinton show up at the same time. <laughs> you know, in two different places. So they're trying to take down the clone centers as well. You've got a huge place in like by Pine Gap, ACIO. They're producing large amounts of stuff like that. So they've got them stored in many places. Alberta had a storage place. If you listen to James Casbolt um, as well from the basis project with Miles Johnson, myself and Max Byers were in those conferences. We saw Angela Merkel, what was it, four or five months ago when she was going through those shaking spasms and stuff. I would suspect that that was a clone breaking down. Either or. You can see the um, effect of Kuru is almost like if you've ever seen Listeria hit an animal with the breakdown of the central nervous system. It operates on a bacteriospirochete, basically spirals into the brain. So you see almost like MS or Parkinson-like symptoms as well. Okay. However, the same thing with a clone. Uh, a clone, there are certain things they recoded or refrequencied, whatever you want to say, the White House. So certain clones were not able to get through the security scanners because it would short them out, so to speak. Again, it's all being done on um, biometrics as well. So hard to say. I mean, we can only deal with, this is all hearsay. And I've had some stuff in front of me that I've dealt with. I've dealt with some clones or cyborgs myself. And ETs, just like you speak, just like we're speaking now, I've spoken to a lot of people that are part of these projects as well. So. All right. So just before we move on, thank you to Diana. She put a definition of Kuru in the Zoom chat. It's a very mm -hmm. rare disease. It's caused by an infectious protein, prion, P-R-I-O-N, yeah. found in contaminated human brain tissue. Kuru is found among people from New Guinea who practice a form of cannibalism in which they ate the brains of dead people as part of a funeral ritual. So yeah. yeah. Thanks, Diana. Yeah. That's what they were saying with um, Hillary Clinton and stuff and some of the stuff that got out on the net again, yeah. as they were taking, you know, the, the picture, over faces the right off and stuff kids. I've seen. It adrenalizes the third eye. So just like, you know, they're not any different. These aren't humans. You know, you can't yeah. rationalize something that's, artificial intelligence. And um, like I said, it's like spirit cooking or cannibalism, call it whatever you want, canines. You know, that's why we are advising people to go vegetarian, vegan right now as well in your intake because they cannot distinguish if they're eating a cow or they're eating you. You're at the same frequency of that animal the minute you start to hybridization and eating chicken and fish and uh, animals, pork and stuff like that. So from even that point of view, to keep your frequency up, you have to stay with living material and high frequency at that. They're harvesting anything under about 300 hertz, which means anything below your heart chakra, basically. So I can tell by the curling photography where people are at, or where the blocks are, and where to open up the meridians, just even from the inflammation of the diet alone can affect you right now for being harvested as well. Are so, they here watching us? Because I've I've seen what I thought were drones over my house numerous yeah. times. Yeah. I've been watched. I've been watched. Yeah. We all are. Yeah. Everyone's chipped multiple. You can't be on this planet and not be chipped. Many of us have multiple things. I'm hearing the frequencies as well with mine. Um, mm -hmm. And like I said, even this stuff too. Like now it's gone back to normal. But I mean, I've been phasing in, in and out and almost like dematerializing anyone that comes in my field when it's, you know, 
they're, they're changing us as well. Plus you're getting the Shulman wave, plus you're getting the corneal mass ejections. There's so much going on, you know, the Cascadia, everything. So it's where to be in a safe time at a safe place, you know, and, and things are in order, you know, it'll have a way of, uh, it, it's the time to be excited because you know what, as far as I'm, it's, we're, we're all just house cleaning now. Yeah. 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 Because I don't feel like I'm alone here a lot of times when I, I'm actually have been afraid to go outside because I thought, you know, there's something out there for sure and I can feel it. Yeah, they are. Yeah. We don't want it. I just got a picture from one of my girls and she showed me something. She was taking a picture to show me this new place she went into and right in behind in the mirror. She didn't realize she was taking a picture in the living room and had a big, you know, mirror in it. And you could see hooded figures behind her intimately. So again, they can come in and out. That's why it's so important to keep your energy field up and solid. And that's what part of I do is, you know, for free testing for people um, with the genus biofeedback. So I do free consultations that way as well if they need. So wow. talk about the, those ET contacts. I, I kind of believe that, you know, all of us here are ETs, in my opinion. Uh, there's <laughs> very few people who are indigenous from this planet, in my opinion. Well, a lot of us that are RH positive, as I said, I may be positive for, let's say, Patty Broussard to be O positive. Those are indigenous bloodlines. Um, my genetic seal goes back through Ursula, and my genetic bloodlines are back 45,000 years. So I am, and I, it's got nothing to do with being red and like, you know, for the Apaches. There were 13 original um, clans and tribes. So you can look that up at Meredith Quinn Tribal Laws. So if you want to look that up, Mr. Meredith Quinn, Tribal Laws. That'll give you a great basis to the genetics of how we were set up. So, Go on. so um, one of the things that you can do is look up Tribal Laws and you'll get an idea of what we're talking about. Patty Brassard spoke a lot. One's at Galactic Goddess, the other one was Ramola D reports. And the other one, like I said, she taught an awful lot on who are we, triple pool, DNA, that kind of thing. So the genetics are very, um, variable. And like I said, we've got over 50 blood types that I'm aware of. If you were created as a clone or whatever in Area 51, those will be different things. So it's not just all negative being alpha draconian or reptilian or palladian. You have many people that are multiple races, but they cannot screw up our RNA factor. They haven't been able to do that. They've been able to use Winro and Rograns to hybridize and put artificial vaccines in so that someone that's RH negative can start carrying an RH positive baby to hybridize them and water us down and eradicate us through genetic side. That's why I couldn't have children. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So it's really huge. I mean, we, I do know people that are of multiple genetics and um, we don't need any more nightmare holes. We need them shut down all these eugenics and genetic stuff I have at the Royal University Hospital. So it is all about bloodline. It really is. But, um, well, what why would they be watching me, for example? Oh, everyone's an experiment here. Everyone on this planet is an experiment, whether they're from different star seeds, different races, whatever. Some had treaties to be here, some had not. They hybridized and bastardized that with Eisenhower and Diefenbaker and stuff like that. But with the Granada Treaty, they broke a lot of them immediately. Um, I had a really nice lengthy discussion with Paul Hellyer, the former Minister of Defense of Canada and all the underground bases and doing things with aliens and greys and maters and tall whites and things like that. So everyone's an experiment and they may have been contracted through the genetic line as well, or have been watching people for multiple, this is a multiple generation thing. I mean, they were planning this, you know, your, your idea of concept of time and theirs are two different things. I've spoken to, you know, reptilians that have told me that they're 14,000 years old or Queen Elizabeth was, you know, 600 years old. You're not dealing with someone that's, you know, got a 30 year old or 60 year old mind. You know, they're pretty sharp. They have some questions on, on YouTube. Sonia is asking, what about RH negative? What, what about them? She wants to know. Well, the RH negative, I mean, I'm not one, but I have lots of friends. Most of my friends are a lot of them, actually. Um, but like I said, that was a built in factor. Um, indigenous people that belong here that have Gaia's blood. It's me. Um, through the genetics will be RH positive with the recent monkey factor blood. So it's, it's positive on the antigens and it's not enough against them because there are many, many benevolent races here, you know, but like I said, you've got nine different Palladian sectors 
and three quarters of the Palladians not only fight between themselves, but they are hostile to the the planet. But there are two benevolent sectors right now that are, and that's something that's kept by treaties. Um, Commander Patty Broussard is one of the knickknack head tribal forces, so she keeps those records. That's in her hands, actually, out on Joe, the Joe, East Coast. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Um, jo Jody has actually two questions. Uh, number one, how do you find your bloodline back that far? And number two, my daughter is RH negative. Should I? Should she be afraid? Um, okay, how do you find it? Don't give them any more it? DNA. Don't give them anything. <laughs> right. No. Okay. 23 no. and me, all that stuff. DNA no. is, yeah. is your data, okay? Yeah. And there are many benevolent races that are allowed to be here. And they have timeshare condos and they've got their treaties and they're little like you think an Indian reserve as well. Some above the ground, some below the ground, whatever. And um, that's fine. That's okay. Some are not supposed to be mixing. We've got a real mixture. We want to treat speaking of social distancing. That's not such a bad thing for teaching how to court rather than dating a game. <laughs> Quite frankly, it's like an Anastasia thing. We've got to learn protocols again that way. Um, you can have someone that's an RH positive mother and they've, in vitro or implanted or abducted you as well with an RH negative baby. Um, sometimes if people have signed, let's say adoption records and stuff like that, they may have done it. You, at this point, the most important thing is the mitochondrial DNA called an mtDNA. And you can look that up online, mtDNA. That teaches you where your haploid, where your mothers came from. So coat of arms are very, very important. We will look at that. If you can go back three, four, five generations. So. I'm actually your grace, Karen, and, and I would say on my mother's side, or my matriarchal line is Lutzik, Zachik, Buzik, Cabbage, and on the patriarchal side or my father's side would be um, McDonald's, but Barons and Mackenzie's and stuff. So very, very important. It's always passed through the, the woman to the woman to the woman all the way down the line. So you can look that up. So Ursula, so some have been here for four or 5,000 years, some of you. And like I said, if you looked up rare blood types, it would almost curl your hair. So I'd suggest going to Project Incension, and that's I-N-C-E-N-S-I-O-N. Project Incension has got a world, not at all, but a whole another multiverse of information for you. And there's a lot of stuff on RH factors and negative and where we came from, where we're going. And at this point, probably one of the best teachers I've seen, one of them will be Patty Broussard, who is an actual hermaphrodite with two third eyes. So don't assume that everyone is built like you are oh okay there's another one here from tamara she's asking uh what what are they doing with our dna on places like ancestry.com 23andme places like that what do they do with our dna i'm not right there in the lab but what am i aware that through what i've seen through the records um we actually disclosed part of this again at project incension on the human genome project it was a front covering and one day Patty basically went into the records and we extracted lots of data, which we exposed. They were taking your DNA, they were using them in the various labs to see what it would basically do to kill you, to genocide you. Because they, everything's about gene banking. Okay, so your IMF fund is actually built on selling women, not just the dowry and the bride price, but on selling the women's DNA. So the women were being classified basically like utility chickens, is kind of how I think of it. Um, you have a class A and a class B and a class C, you know, it's like utility chickens. And so they were selling the genetics on and off the planet. So they were mixing different things and hybridization, doing in vitro things, um, biological warfare, that type of thing. But in the bottom line, I mean, it's all unlawful, it's immoral and unethical, and it violates all the proclamations, you know, of peace here. So they've been doing all sorts of experiments there. You can actually see if you go into the blood types, not just look up, you know, the four that they lied to us about and then the other four. There's actually things if you were actually made in Area 51 and null and all sorts of things. But Project Incension has got amazing information on that information to do with the blood lineage. I had to give my DNA to them a few years ago. To who? Yeah. They gave to contracts. The, to the police department. Yeah. It made no I, sense to me, but... Again, you there are ways to re, you know refuse you know I would say refuse decline their offers. It's like contract offer. Um, them even answering like even to me to interfere with me is an act of war. They're not even supposed to touch stuff. You know, 
as clan mother. So that's where the women really need to get empowered and really step into your power. I can really encourage each and every one of you is to look at your mitochondrial DNA and look at yeah. some of those videos I told you about like tribal laws and, and stuff. And you've got to be able to prove who you are. You can't inherit anything if you can't say who you are. And that's part of the problem. We've got a bunch of usurpers here and people that have been buying titles that the IMF and the trust funds have now been dissolved. We actually started dissolving them in 2013, by the way. So you're just seeing kind of the overflow of what's been going on for the last um, seven years, eight years. Wow. Loris Cannon says that we're the, uh, our DNA is galactic royalty. Why is that? I wouldn't say it's galactic royalty. Royalty is a, a term that's actually from the region or the draconian things. So the original peoples like myself are nobility, which is actually the opposite to royalty. Um, and it's not just a galactic signature. There are things that are done on the moon basis um, that were being done through the black ops, the MIC complex, and uh, all those nefarious things that were going on through um, a dark side I will say the space program and Trump and the Galactic Alliance have come in now and the Andromeda Councils to so the Council of Five, Council of Nines to straighten us out. And so I would never want to be part of the royalty. <laughs> I, I'm here to indict them actually and all their heirs and descendants. So I have absolutely no royal blood in me. Neither does Trump, by the way, which is why um, he's been put into I, that place. I think Dolores was metaphorically speaking. Yeah, but not everyone is. We have nanotechnology, we have mm -hmm. cyborgs here, we have skinwalkers yeah. here. Yeah. So you can have an uplink or not have an uplink. Not everyone's got a soul on this planet either. So um, you have to look at who the individual, what, what the being actually is here too. Sonia is asking, what about every time we need to take a blood sample at the doctor's office? What do they do with that? <sighs> I, I can't speak for where every place is. You know, we have stuff that is going in for nefarious places. They use uh, black magic, sex black magic, just like I use Tesla plates for this. You don't need blood samples. I mean, when we have biofeedback and rife and doing it again, rife and radionics, that's just freaky. There's like nothing here behind this wall. <laughs> it's, they're super and poison stuff. It's, it's really wild. Um, but what they do with the, the blood can be used for a lot of things. You know, they can use it for cloning. They can use it for genetics. Again, like I said, um, if you're organ harvestable, I mean, people have been signing donor cards and stuff. I mean, you should never have to, when you know actually medicine, you can do everything in the field. I would never, ever. I broke my knee in multiple places, my ankle, and I'm a nurse. I don't go in there. I don't even hold a health card. When yeah. you walk into a hospital, you're dealing with not with just black magic and sorcery. You're dealing with high-tech nefarious 5G and different radionics and scalar that are very satanic. Once you just even go into those places, you know, yeah. same thing with abortions and the DNA and the placentas we need as women to relook at what we're doing. When do you think the, these uh, sealed indictments are going to be unsealed in large numbers? Oh, you know, not everything's in the ceiling. They've started unsealing some of them bit by bit. I've seen more in actually the, what up here, like provincial courts already. So they've been rounding up people. If people are on my Facebook. It doesn't matter if it's the, your state courts down there or the provincial ones up here and internationally. They have been rounding these up. I mean, the amount of sex harvesting and sex rings and prostitution rings and drugs coming through is phenomenal. I mean, if we even added that close to what was being indicted, um, the indictments are going to be going out bit and bit and parcel. Like I said, they're still trying to round up people. And I know basically because they're still blowing up deep underground military bases they're also going in to retrieve records and stuff so they haven't received even all nearly the records they have to um do all the rest of the indictments or to be able to read off who else is going to be in these whatever you want to say mafia gangs either but they've already started on some of the stuff like i said bit by bit i mean i've been told uh, there's a lot of people through the military courts that have already been dealt with so it, it's going to be coming. You'll, you'll know it's probably as much as mine. When they're going to release something, they'll release it. I hear there's going to be quite a bit coming up, but we all hear that. I've been hearing mm -hmm. that for a long time, too. Yeah. Does anyone here in Zoom have any questions? I do. Of course I do. I'm kind of curious about this um, 
I've noticed celebrities, um, I don't want to say any names, but Forrest Gump, for instance, <laughs> a little obvious. The little hanky panky. Yeah, okay. They're posting pictures of the antique typewriters. Yeah. With the brand name Corona. Corona. Yeah. And they're putting in codes of the 201. Yeah. Um, and like certain in their comments, you know, um, is that something to do with, I mean, does this make them a part of this? I mean, even the pizza with the, uh, with the pepperonis and the little boy symbol that, that yes, that's, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. They're, they're pulling up some of the, they're digging up some of the different areas, you know, is what I've been told. Um, the other thing too, I was contacted by a couple of really high up celebrities in the last week. I'm like, is this a joke? And then it came on me. We, and it came, you know, I'm going, Oh no, this is like on, on the level. These people what were they asking me. you. I'm still waiting for what that's going to be. I don't know if it's like clemency or what they expect, but um, there are a lot of people I've talked to that have um, even here have disclosed that they've been down into some of these um, satanic kill rooms, you know, and stuff here that they've had. And again, it's been bred into them because there are CIA and multi-generational things going on. Most of these celebrities and stuff too, like um, Hanky Panky there. Um, you know, you got to remember a lot of them are Rothschilds, Rockefellers, but these are now the brokest, most sought after people. They're not rich. So when people get past that, they Trump and the Alliance, I don't want you to say just Trump, the whole Galactic Alliance here, Andromeda Councils, and all, this is millions of us all involved. They've been at this, you know, projects i've been at this since 1997 this is not new to me um the pizza gate pedophile gate is what we lived so there's many of us that we've known about it for a long time trying to stop it is another matter and we had to go through international courts and you know when i put in the arrest warrant for queen elizabeth for what she did in Camelot's british columbia at the schwet mac taking all the children up for residential schools so i started with that that was my, my first thing and also for her stealing our international waters all the waters that you guys drink do you know where your water comes from? The water that you get flowing through your taps. Do you know where your your water comes from in the states? No. Mine's coming yeah. out of the ground. <laughs> Unless you're okay, but I'm well. But still, the aquifers. Do you know where they come from? They're on my land. So your waters, and it's all about water war crimes up here. If you know about Admiralty Maritime and all that cosmic law. The water. This is all about the water. And so the water that goes down into Standing Rock and into the Mississippi, Missouri, and to the Gulf of Mexico comes from a place called Elk Water, which is right between Saskatchewan and Alberta, which is five hours from me. And my flag hangs up there, not the Canadian flag. So they were stealing this kind of stuff to the bases. And I went after them for, and to the Marines and stuff like that. So I went into, into international, like stealing all international waters is a big no-no crime. As weird as it mm -hmm. is, it's a worse crime than killing someone. So um, we started with doing that. And so a lot of the waters that you guys are drinking are actually up from our land. Up in here. I've always had this thing about water, but I did, I've not known what it was. And anytime I've had a reading, they, they always say, what is it about water with you? And, and I've never known, but I've always felt like there was underground water systems under my house almost. Yeah, we and did. I didn't. I don't know. You're saying so much stuff that is just. Yeah, the, the water itself is. Um, there's aquifers, which I have access to the map. That's classified information. But even here, you know, they're not going to let me show. <laughs> there's different points and portals around what you call the sacred sites on the whole continent. OK. And um, the water itself and water is very special to my heart besides being a decol and hydrotherapist, um, water's life and the cosmic waters go back to spring water. So you will see all of us like David Wolf and myself and others, we forge and protect the spring waters up here. So I, I suggest people go to findaspring.com because it's chemically different. It's a photonic water that goes through all the chakras and really helps um, protect you that way. It's got very ennobled, not royal elements, but ennobled, noble elements. So Ormus and gold and silver and special things that we, Make us protected. Can I ask you about uh, distilling water? 
Um, I'm not a fan necessarily of it. It has applications. Um, it is dead water to start with, as you know. Um, and you're taking usually a city water as a rule. And then you're putting it through a distillation process. Right. Um, just like people ask me about Congan waters and other different things, Jupiters and Athena's and all sorts of things. So I'm quite well aware of it because I used to be with all the guys. It has its applications when you're playing with pH. If you're dealing with an original um, water, let's say when I was in the Kootenays, as you call them, British Columbia, and dealing with that, it's got a different thing than taking city water that's been fluoridated and put through satanic scalar machines. Okay. And at a nanotechnology level, you can never get everything out. It just, it's not there. So even when I take here, what I do, what I found the best thing is not just hooking a client up and doing a biofeedback remote or with, you know, coils on them. It's putting it on a Tesla plate here and putting it with spring water. And it acts better than homeopathic or anything else. And what happens here is that you can put the water on. So how I've gotten people over Corona or stage four cancer or whatever it might be is to actually use a Tesla plate. And in that case, I would only ever use, I've tried all sorts of things, um, but it has like a Tesla coil plate here. Okay, so it plugs into the, your phone. And what you're doing is you're turning your phone or iPad into an actual new electrical field. It's got its own field. So I can't get the same results using ever distilled water. There's applications for sure, like acidic water versus alkaline water when you're doing with funguses and stuff and distillations for your inorganic and versus organic minerals. There are things, but I'm just not a big fan of touching anything from the city once it's gone through the system and the pipes and the angles and all that stuff too. You know, it's just, it's, it's a bastardization of it. To me, the spring water, that's like mom's milk. You know, you don't screw with it mother nature. But again, a lot of people will have sex success. But what I've also done is I found a lot of my clients had severe amounts of funguses. So they would be alkaline in their mouth. And when I get down to the urine pH, they would be very acidic and be full of candida yeast, prions, amoebas, whatever I was testing for. And that's why I'm really into teaching people about this pelvic themes. I think it's the best thing ever we've come back to for actually health. Doesn't matter if you got cancer to brain fog to whatever, you can smudge out or steam or fumigate, whatever you want to call it, purify out the whole field. So if you want a full chakra, you know, smudging or whatever you want to say, or realignment, you'd be doing steaming. Very huge. And then you can play with the water. I like actually restructuring the water that way into what the clients need. Because it's different for every one of us. We all absorb differently. Because most of the well water anymore is bacteria. Yeah. My well is bad. Yeah. I, I can't drink the water here. Yeah. Yeah. There's something, um, the only one I've seen, uh, well, I'm just, for example, it's called ion faucets, ION and faucets. So there's some that you can use that help retroidalize it. Um, using carbon C60, being with David Wolf and stuff a lot, I found when we were in Calgary because I've been meeting with him. We've been doing joint projects for the last couple of years, but um, carbon C60 or activated charcoal is huge. You know, putting mm -hmm. some copper stuff in anything you can do, shungite in the water, anything like that, you know, yeah. to restructure it. And again, we're, we're doing, I think, the most exciting thing any of us can do. Like right now, after I had a nursing thing I was helping some people with, um, she went and decided to go talk to a medical doctor who happened to be an oncologist, said, oh, no, you can't do that. She listened to him and within a couple of days was dead because they decided to give Dilaudid, which is what you use in the States for lethal injection. We don't have that up here, but down there you do. But they gave it to my client and she dropped dead. So right now you make the best. I'm sitting in a friend's basement right now <laughs> until I get my camper ready. We have to, you know, and I go haul my water. That's what she was just asking me. She goes, we're rotating our water because we go up to the springs of Petrovka here. And so go to findaspring.com. You can usually find it. It's worth the afternoon out just to go foraging for water. water so, when they, so when I, you know, I'm drinking a, it's, it's a Zephyr Hills uh, yep. water from Florida and it says Florida spring water, but you're saying that's not from here. You have to take a look. We have got so many people that have fraudulently <laughs> mislabeled stuff and put spring water when it's not. So you actually, if I were you, Greg, I would go contact the actual supplier. It may be from one. I have one supplier in all of Saskatchewan that does actually get it from a spring, but then they treat it again and then ozonate it. If I want, I go directly to my Petrovka 
I'm up there, I measure it, I do the ORP, I touch the pH, the total parts dissolvable solids, and ours are piped out here. So if you go to findatspring.com, you'll usually see a lot of them have piped out. And um, you never know where you're getting it. I need to know. It's like when I want my oils, I go see Tony because I need to know who feeds me. If I'm not growing stuff myself, then I need to know who the gardener is. And, you know, maybe contacting those people. Mm -hmm. We have so much miscellaneous, it's not even funny. And it very well may be from a spring. Some ozonate, some treat. And I want mine untreated, by the way. <laughs> I don't want anyone bastardizing my water. That's another I wanna... question I have, though, for you, too, because I do add ozone into the water. because of... I love ozone. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just going to ask you your opinion. Uh, what... I love ozone, actually. Um, yeah. I play with it quite a bit. Actually, my girlfriend's yeah. brother is the one that runs Ozone Canada. <laughs> All the Olsons up here. And um, it has its applications that save my butt. Ozonated gel is very, very powerful. In fact, I just found, as they were talking about in Calgary here, um, that uh, they've got, an, where's your nearest source? You watch no for spring water in Calgary. I caught that in the thing, Linda. Canmore. Go to the people at uh, the light cellar because we're doing stuff online, but Canmore, and it's on the blue bridge there. You have to go off to the right by Harvey Heights right before you go to Bound. See, I even know where I have to get people in Alberta to spring water. We all go up there. So there are lots of different people in there. And, um, you know, you can find out or test them or put them into another container like a Berkey or something. But That's I good think good. it's really important, especially in these days and times, we don't know what's happening. I mean, it's very easy to knock out the grid. They're going to be busy doing their stuff and, and power to them. I'm so happy to our forces. I happy dance every day. So, um, you know, where you can get this stuff and I mean, different areas like she's talking about, you're getting poison, you're getting fracking here, which is, you know, just as bad as doing, you know, injecting lethal poison into the lands and stuff for us. If you can get the water and find that and get a test on it, we'll see what can happen from there. Um, and go into, you know, what kind of, what you want. You're going to see a big difference just by even switching the water. Alkalizing the water is not always the best thing that we need. Um, but you need to be alkaline in your blood at 7.4. So getting that, that tested is very important because some spring waters, my, my water up here is just about 10 or 11 naturally for alkalinity. But if I went to Canmore, it's about, I think it was about nine and a half to 10. And there are many springs that are just under seven. So it's not about that. It's about maybe adding some other stuff in here too. So again, you never know what's going to happen until you take a look and you're going to, you know, talk to the supplier. I know here they, they ozonate too, and um, you can now get ozone little containers. I've just ordered up a hydrogen one. So we're going to be talking about deuterium water and hydrogen water, kind of like the Victor Schauberger and um, uh, doing some of those things, you know. Um, so you could take a look at that. I just ordered up a hydrogen water thing off Amazon for about 50, 60 bucks too. So very cool. You can now get actually portable ones. I don't know if you, Greg, uh, you can get for... Um, ozonated ones not three four hundred dollars but they're little portable ones that can sit on the uh, kitchen sink or something plug it in and even ozonate all the vegetables now yeah so, i've got one it only costs like 60 bucks exactly yeah 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 i, I, that, I was showing i was showing something here on the screen share it was a recent q post and do you think maybe he may be uh in, inferring that there might be you know the lights might go out kind of thing and yeah. if that does happen, do you think that would be for a positive reason, like rounding up people and, you know? If, if yeah, I wish it would. Um, even more so. Um, and yeah, actually just mentioned the limit too. Yes, I know Jesse Hall and I'm going to be on the Club 144 tomorrow, which they're all part of with <laughs> Andrea Maria. I was just talking to them in, in DC right now. Um, one of the things too, with that power going out or grid out, I would think it's a positive thing. I mean, anyone that's had to deal with our children getting addicted to these games and stuff, but not only that, to the frequency of what it's doing to them. Quite frankly, I don't think it would be a bad thing for all of us to take a break for six months, a year or two, or the summer. Um, it wouldn't really bother me. There are things with free energy machines that will be coming out. Um, I have been told, not only just from the Galactics, but we have the ability, and they're going to see about possibly switching over the 5G, even going to 6G, that would be a healing benevolent frequency, which is basically what this is in a way, anyway. So the radionics is a little different than the microwave. And um, in talking with, you know, Sasha Stone and with, um, especially with Mark Steele, I've spent a lot of time because I also made the moratorium up not only internationally, not just for Canada and the States, but internationally um, that went to the world courts for crimes against humanity and acts of war for the 5G. 
So to have us take a bit of a breather, I mean, I don't even like a cell phone. I mean, we should all be like still plugged in at this point until we had, you know, like the Tartarian society and, and our spires and our before mud flood cities and all that kind of free energy. If we could get that. And what Caddy Broussard was really talking about the other night in her briefing with us is because they're part of the teams that are doing the deals with the Galactics. So she's part of that thing, trying to um, deal with people and not only Silver Legion and stuff like that, but getting the replicator technology. I really wouldn't mind as long as we could have, you know, the power. We don't need the dirty electricity, but having that up. And seriously, there's a lot to be said about having fun by candlelight and fire. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's something I was just talking to Allison yeah, the other day about this. Um, you know, there's a thing called Li-Fi yeah. that has been around for like the last three yeah. years. Yeah, you yeah. don't need F and 5G for it. You don't need anything. It runs, your internet runs on light. You know, it doesn't make sense why we even need 5G. Exactly. And I think that's the one thing. Um, not too many people, like I had a whole bunch of stuff happen. They put one of the first 5G towers that went secretly active, we'll just say. They don't admit to it, but I know it went off. It was about two blocks from where it was staying. And with the chemicals, they released something in the air. I think it really was some sort of a targeting. And I was getting tired of being the canary in the coal mine. And um, I almost died from that. Because once that can go systemic, you can feel, I could feel my heart starting to go. And if I hadn't got to Calgary and into the mountains and into between here and um, I went with one of the guys to Vancouver to be off the grid for a couple of days, I probably wouldn't have made it. Being off the grid is so healing. And whether I've got a grounding machine or I've got like a amethyst yeah. crystal biomat here, these act like a grounding machine too. So they're kind of acting more like a Li-Fi. You got to remember, yeah. you got public versions, you got military, and you got other frequency bandwidths. So this is what we're trying to reintroduce back to the population right now. Last March, I my face got really, really red, and I got really hot, and I mm -hmm. I didn't know why. And for some reason, I took a a picture of myself because it was just it was weird. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, my face keeps getting really red quite often. And when I looked it up the other day, the five G tower was installed like 20 or 10 miles, eight miles from me on two days before my face got red. See, every time I want to show you something, they're phasing it out, but there. And if you can briefly see for a second, can you see the burning, how whited out my eyes are and teeth? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That I brought in after I was crudely attacked by some sort of weaponry, we'll just say. Um, I got up one day and I was just burnt like zero, like I'd been put on a George Foreman press here. And I did this thing with Dr. Alfred Weber because they put the 5G towers all by me. And so I realized what it was. And of course, I'm out here as an activist. I'm a peacekeeper and a very proactivist. And I would go up to the city of Saskatoon and basically go into moratoriums, but I'd start filming them. And I did. I had that tower down in two days, I might add. Um, so... When they start burning, that's what I did is I called in a guy that can do thermal imaging like that. So I scan with my machine first because I can scan for 5G, 4G adaptations and all sorts of dirty electricity. So this is not just a, I want to do your aura. This does COVID, it does viruses, bacteria, hormones, but it also re-energizes the water to give you back and feedback what you need. But this was a burn, for example. I got burnt here and I brought in a guy that does the infrared and he was a former RCMP officer. I don't know if you can see the burning. <laughs> <We're No. laughs> Barely. <laughs> yeah, wake up to that. Okay, so um, I knew something was up. If I'm on my phone too long now, my face, I mean, I have to put my phone down after a while. Yeah, and I didn't bring my 5G. Normally, I've got my <laughs> little owl glasses, which are my 5G ambers that are down there. I just kind of popped in just to see how you're doing. <laughs> Well, from what I understand, they can they can pinpoint out people. Oh, for sure. You oh. can do that from the satellite. It takes two seconds. I could ask Patty right now what your license plate is and give her a minute or two to fire up the machines, and we'll have it. Everything is known here. There's no such thing as a UFO. So you're chipped. It's identified. The thing is to get over it. Let's grow up, and let's have fun and see what we can do with it now. So it's not a problem. It really isn't. You know, the, Once they're sifting this out, like I said, there's a cabal army that's got to go 
and that thing, but the military is now getting cleaned up from the inside out. You've got special allied forces here too, cleaning things. So it's really going to be okay. We just need to chill out for yeah. a while and let things take its course. And, you know, maybe six months ago, we wouldn't have been having all these conversations. Um, the whole thing too, when people are talking about, um, you know, they want to do all these global meditations and stuff. And again, they can feed off that loose because people are so scared of soul that they need to feel they have to do these things. And they can feed off that indirectly kind of loose as well. And with the yeah. debt forgiveness and stuff like talking about the um, Nisera and Jacera, ideally what Patty and our idea was when we talked with the clans and the tribes and came to better, to a better, I think, agreement was that we would actually be doing off-grid facilities to protect you. That would be 5G proof and ozone proof and everything else, kind of like what they have on Mars colonies. And that these were to be the law of gifting. There's not the law of Jacera. It's not the law of... Just Sarah, it's not the law of the gold standard and the law of the silver and the rape are, are minerals. It's the law yeah. of gifting. Mm -hmm. And after that comes bartering. And after that, we shouldn't have to have a discussion, <laughs> quite yeah. frankly. So they're going to move things in steps as they see. But that was actually our vision was to have everything sustainable. Give the free energy machines back with the replicator technology. And we just enjoy our lives. We have a, a question in the chat room uh, from Stephen. Do you feel fracking was used to poison the water supplies? Well, I feel it. I know. <laughs> I, I, if you want to take something even from a, a, a public perspective, you could take Google Earth and just go up and just zoom out so that you can kind of see Canada and the States and you'll see what the fracking has done to this planet. So when they started flooding the basis um, on our command and our chain of command, they started doing the Florida on the Calgary basis, or sorry, California basis. And they started flooding in. We started seeing regeneration. You saw the air and the ozone starting to go purple from the skies. Um, you also saw a huge purple violet haze, almost actually hot pink. It's not really a purple haze. It's not a violet flame. It's actually a mauve. And the flowers were starting to grow back again in Death Valley. So as we salinated and put that water and salt water, life is salt water. So when they resalinated those tunnels and cities, we could see it regenerate. So it is quite, we're seeing life come back. Mm. I mean, I've been seeing these positive things coming back over and over and over again. And the fracking is, is just evil. So if you go up, you want to see something weird, you can go up around Medicine Hat in Alberta, and you can look up a very high thing, but elk water, that's where they were stealing most of the waters from. So a lot of that, they fracked and they injected all along those points. So you can actually see a lot of fracking sites always by usually uh, one of the military or army bases. Go around and see what they've done. They've destroyed almost everything because it's going to their underground bases, which are now being shut down. So our water supply will regenerate. We don't have a lack of water here. We never have. This is where it's going. There's a question in YouTube from mm -hmm. Maria who wants to know, do you recommend taking Ormus? Well, Ormus is naturally in, actually, if you're not doing Soleil, which you can do, um, you have a lot of stuff that's in, let's say, Atlantic salt, sea salt and stuff. You know, if you want to pay the, you know, $1,500 a bottle, $200 a bottle, then you can do it. I have taken it. I mean, I do have friends like David Wolf that I get stuff off of, you know, um, just like I got a new one out there that's a nanotechnology, 20,000 parts per million. And I did say 20,000, not 20, 20,000 parts per million that just came out in nano coated silver, which is different than colloidal. Um, so we were just playing with that um, just to see what it's doing. And so that what was did it do? the things I got. What did that do? Um, again, so much antibacterial and stuff putting in, you know, kind of like yeah. uh, monatomic yeah. gold. It would be like a monatomic silver, so to speak. The Ormus is actually in naturally. Seriously, if you look at the um, periodic table and look at the noble elements you're going to see them already in spring water i really don't think we need anything too much more than that what we need to do is be detoxing that's why i like using steam water because it goes interdimensionally drinking water inside is one thing doing enemas and clonics it's another but doing steam water and it's not just sitting in a sweat lodge or sitting in an aromatherapy thing but steam chairs are phenomenal they open up every timeline mm -hmm. in meridian you want to get rid of brain fog and anxiety and depression and stuff go sit on a steam chair like look at steamy check get a chair get a box get whatever men and women do that that's the best way to do it um for getting cleaned out i'm really big about the water i could have a whole hydrology thing on that but um i think if you go into 
looking at what you can do to bring it in and restructuring. It's not that I want to charge water. I don't, I want to actually have it just, you know, symbiotic, like a, a relation with it. So in there, if that makes sense. What is a steam chair? A steam chair. Um, I have got, I want you to look up steamychick.com. Oh, shoot. I don't know if I can do a thing. Actually, Greg, you're probably able to. If you look up Yoni, Y-O-N-I, or vaginal steam chairs, yeah. and just do image, you will actually be able to screen share. I could do it too, but you're, it's easier for you. Um, there's a place called steamychick.com. There's a place called Tecum Spa. This is where Gwyneth Paltrow and all those guys go. It's called a Yoni Steam, a Korean hip bath, a banjo. Up here they call it a punin. So when I had all the Cree Indians ask me for what I wanted for punin, I thought they meant pudding initially, but they meant, <laughs> what do you got for our vaginas? Mm -hmm. um, it's not just about longevity, but it's creativity. It's opening up your second chakra. These are anything from wood chairs, and you can have professional ones in here. It could be a stool. Um, I've seen gold ones. I've seen them anywhere from just a stump to, you can see the girls here, they look like little pumpkins. What you do is you usually put a hot plate or you put a bunch of herbs underneath, calendula, rose, rosemary. Um, they can be in clay. This goes back thousands of years. And they're quite funny. <laughs> There's a place called in Georgia called the, the sweet spot. This is for men and women and children. And also I've done animals. So the idea is that this is how your original Pachamama is actually healed. The women, if you look at the black women, it just, it, it makes me just laugh because anyway, <laughs> this is called the sweet spot in Georgia. So instead of having all these, uh, you know, pedicure and all this sort of crap, these women are actually sitting on a hot plate and it's warm steam that you sit on for half an hour to an hour. So if you have not heard about this, this is probably the most and top way to do healing. And so you'll see them in all through Europe. You see them all extensively through Russia. A lot of what I'm talking about, even the, the Tesla technology and the biofeedback, everything I'm talking about is, is done extensively in our Russian bloodlines. So we're called bear, the Russian bear, uh, or ved bear, vedrus, Ayurvedic. Um, so if you know Anastasia and the Ringing Cedars of Russia, this is the way to do it. Now again, there's a place called Red Tent Wellness, and you can get professional steamers, they're about 200, but I like to make seriously just a little hot plate one. And you take um, a chair, I've actually gone to Canadian Tire, taking you know, those canvas little chairs that you go to the beach with and cut a hole in it. So in red tent wellness and stuff like that, you can see they actually got steamer units. This is a wood one, but they've also got a plastic one that they have. Um, we've got Yoni Institute and Womb Sauna. So this is also to do with Aztec, Mayan, or clan or tribal healing. So I like going to a lot of these. You can look up, like I said, um, Yoni or vaginal thing, and I'm here to include you. I'm probably the only one that ever made a men's <laughs> version of this. The men all do this, and I've seen that you can go back into, um, in Asia, you can look at the Ming dynasties, all the nobility actually healed with this. And so the men had their own thing. They might, you know, use some salt pimento, or they might use different herbs, but this was part of, actually, I really think what the bridal shower was all about. It was also for longevity. It was part of the marital rights as well. And women, when they had um, rites of passage, so there's a whole thing called the V-Spa there as well. Um, you can go into, and they've got several different things there. They can use anything from herbs to oils, but you can go into like Alibaba or anything. You can see chairs that are three, $4,000 in Europe that you can go into. Well, I have so, with chairs with the no middle because I use them for outdoor planters. Yep. A planter can be used exactly. I've used, I like cedar and I like wood myself. So I have one actually down here. Um, I might just bring it back over here, but I use, I find I like wood myself. Um, I'm like Anastasia, a cedar wood. There's nothing that replaces that. The other thing too, is I've seen them with gold, silver, um, organite things. You can do just even people have lifted a toilet seat up and draped a towel inside, but that's only gives you about five minutes. So I really think this is a key way for men, especially they would not be getting up at night. They would have better erections. They would never have cancer and they wouldn't be, again, controlled down. That's what prostate cancer is. It's a word that means fermented prostate. It means to be subjected as a slave. Yes. So this is a huge thing. Now, I think we should go back to our tartans. 
<laughs> and just lift them up and go sit on the steamy chairs. So um, this is something that's really cool. But my Facebook has all these um, categories, all these different PowerPoints, all the different things about doing DAA, you know, restoration, repair. So this is huge. I mean, the skin, let alone um, looking younger. You know, like I said, most people are getting up to pee at night, right? Because they're so toxic or they're getting insomnia. And this 5G Corona thing, I mean, you're smudging. You can smudge not just on the chair. I can put the hot plate down and stand over it and just vape. And you're getting all the different timelines and meridians. You know, you can do your face, you know, so we do ours regularly. When I have people with cancer, I put them on for half an hour to 45 minutes every day. The only time you don't do it is when you're menstruating, you know, in there. But we've done dogs. I've done lots of dogs in Saskatoon, <laughs> steam chairs. Or, you know, putting them into a kennel and steaming it out with a herb, like the old nurses used to do uh, croup temps. They, you know, or nebulizing. You can nebulize with steam or herbs or with colloidal silver as well, or gold. Copper's another thing now too. Yep. Yeah. So if you haven't seen that, I really encourage you to do that. I went to Canadian Tire up here. And like I said, I just got one of those, you know, you would be like a card table chair and um, just cut it up. Just got a pair of scissors and ripped it up. So I have about four of them actually here because I keep two of them out all the time. I have five, I guess, that I have. I already have one time. outside without one uh, seat on it. So, yep. I'm it's an outhouse. Like, you know, it doesn't get any easier than that, really. Uh, girls use camp chairs. I've used a lot of, um, do you guys know what a commode chair is? That we would use in a hospital or someone that's incontinent, it goes up to the bed or for the elderly, they use a commode chair. So it's like a portable, a porta potty, a yeah. little porta potty. And you can actually take the potty part out and just put the steam chair underneath. So that's another thing that we use as well. So um, excellent, excellent way. You absorb 70% of what's in there. Um, no, we'll be able to see. This is one of the ones that we have up here. I have a friend making them. So you can see the little hot plate underneath that red pot. And then you just sit on it. So it's got to be about a seven inch hole. Okay. But like I said, it, it can be a chair, a pot. It could be whatever you want it to be. Um, planters are great. They really are. But so what's happening? Is it pulling, is it pulling the toxins out of your body? Or? It's a form of chelation, yeah, steam chelation as well, but it opens up all the meridians. So when you start thinking of what the meridians are, if you know your acupuncture meridians, uh -huh. it does the conception. It's like your future life and your back life. You want to get rid of stuff, right? let go, you'll be steaming. Okay. And I just want you to think from a, a very, very simple term. Think about the power of a steam locomotion, a steam train. Now think about the power of moving a steamboat. Do you yeah. not think it can penetrate and move a few things in and out of you? Because it can't. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you can do facial steaming and things like that. You know, the, here's another one where you just, like I said, you get a, a whatever, $19 hot pot and just put it on top. Um, I use an induction plate. I've been experimenting with so many things. I put David Wolf's chocolate in, you know. I said, you have no idea where I'm putting your chocolate now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rishi mushroom, all see that huge Rishi mushroom? That's from the light cellar in Calgary, by the way. That that Rishi mushroom was almost as big as we were. So shaga mushroom is a huge thing. So putting mushrooms in there, um, putting whatever you want. When you want to look at clan mothers, by the way, uh, tribal laws, these are the ones below Atlantis. These are the tributes to the clan mothers and the tribe mothers that are kept by security under the water in Atlantis. So there's lots of things when... What I'm telling you about, like, we're just basically the, I want to say the old hag, but yeah, <laughs> that's basically what we are. Um, you can use a lot of different things like calendula, rose, wormwood, apple peelings, all sorts of stuff. So you can look up yoni or herb steaks. I mean, everyone wants to make money off this, but quite frankly, you can get any herb. You can do, I do vegetable peelings. That's where I put my compost some days. You know, it's basically like a stew or like a tea. It really is. It's not rocket science simple things heal you know we're looking for things that are too complicated quite frankly that's so what i, I keep getting is keep it simple it is it's like the the kiss exactly you know um after 35 years of doing medicine you know doing herbology iridology using oils you know training with gary young doing that kind of stuff and i love the quantum medicine for our electrical magnetic field it's a must we are fighting a spiritual or whatever you want to say an electrical war here you need to put down your electrical magnetic field first. 
and people can do all the Reiki and everything else, but you need electrical magnetic kind of stuff to put that some of these fields back into place properly and to identify it. So there's nothing wrong with having things, you know, in a proper way and then using the natural things to ground us. Like I said, we'd all be going to solarian and breatharian and there's a lot to be said for that. That's why the colon hydrotherapy comes up because there's nothing in your system for it. That's really what sovereignty is. And Electronics fine. always mess up really bad around me. They always They're have. Right. Electronics, anything electronic messes up with around me. Yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> and it hurts. I, ca I can't wear anything. I will, if I put a watch on with crystals, it will burn my bones. Yeah. yeah, it hurts. A lot of time engines won't start if I'm near them. If I walk away, they will. Mm hmm yeah, it'd be very cool to test you guys if you wanted, you know, like I said, you're welcome. There's a free download at geniusbiofeedback.com or the other one, the developers, Ryan Williams, who worked with Dr. Bill Nelson on those e-doctor skills, but they were offshoots of the Apollo 13 project. And um, he was from the army. So he brought that software technology and he's the one that brought him portably. So he's got his at Genius Insight Health apps down in California and she's in Portland. But those ones have free things that you can download for a couple of weeks and get it per month or get packages, whatever. We've got everything now from do it yourself to naturopathic school and these things. So, and we do have a, a university, which is the IQUIM, which I'm part of. So we have integrative international galactic wow. <laughs> universities for all of us on the councils too. Wow. You mentioned um, your Facebook page or your web page or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, I've got four, I've got six, I think left. They took down some. I think I got about I half. Post, I posted it for you anyway okay. in the Zoom group chat as well as in the uh, YouTube chat. And I'll put a link in the more info as, as well. Most Thank of them are going to say I'm over 5,000 plus whatever the followers are. Just send me a message directly because I've got to make a new one. So I'll just add you into the new one. But send me a message. I get the message as always. Okay. Yeah. So, awesome. Far does, anyone, out. does anyone have a, any more questions here in Zoom? Not. <laughs> it's been an no, absolute pleasure. I really that enjoyed this. Wow. I'm just like blown away and so grateful. Thank you. I knew I came on for a reason today. And mm -hmm. yeah, so amazing. Thank you, Karen. Well, I, I think I could probably, can I speak for Dr. Ariel Policano? No, but I'm going to offer you something. <laughs> um, Greg, last time we did something, we had such an incredible response. She wanted to talk to you directly and offer to you and everyone in 5D, a special gift. Okay. So if you want to take up on Dr. Ariel Policano at Genius Biofeedback, I think she would like to assist you and maybe do a show with you. Sure. And she was prepared to make a special gift package for you guys. Okay. So, we like so gifts. I will, <laughs> I will maybe coordinate that again because she was right. so happy with that. We had a lot of people. I did a lot of sessions. I was busy, I think, for about two weeks awesome. just doing – therapies for people for remote viewing and distance healing um yeah. but yeah i know there's a class she has every monday for free but that was something i think she wanted to do a special possibly with you yeah um well have her get in You're touch open. with me on on facebook or it's yeah. probably the best way yeah um so yeah that'd be cool i'd, I'd like to do that yeah I, i'm so happy for what you've done and um it, it's so grateful to be with people that are so open-hearted so open-minded here and you guys uh, are all a blessing <laughs> you know, to the planet and to being with us. And we really, really appreciate that for your insight, your help, your understanding. Yeah, you. Yeah, you be a back. Sasebo, which means we thank you. Oh, thank you. So that's part of something that we still speak original custom juice. It just a lot. <laughs> this was a really pleasant surprise. It was an amazing surprise. We'll put it that way for you coming on yeah. again and just, you know, keep, keep, keeping us updated and, you know, yeah, You're always really, welcome here. <laughs> yeah, if you want to go, if Patty gets on this guy, a shaman, she's on Facebook. Um, like I said, I know Jean's doing a few things too, and it's going to come out more and more. And um, I, there's some beautiful things coming, like planned in here. Like I said, it's kind of like it looks a little messy while we're cleaning things up and readjusting. And, you know, that's what making the nation is great about. It's not making a country. We're, we're taking the countries apart. We're taking that corruption apart, and we're going to reset up our original nations. You know, we're not one. We, we, oneism is assimilation. So we're coming back into all our powers and then we can come back together and share it like a potlatch. 
Oh, yeah, my whole world days changed. ahead, definitely. But so, uh, how how do we get in touch with her again? Okay, Where like, you right here. Who me? <laughs> yeah. Um, you said that she w the the lady that wanted to uh, give us all a gift. Oh, that's Dr. Ariel Policano. I can type that in the chat room in a minute. She's at geniusbiofeedback.com. She's got a little chat box or whatever. You can talk to her there or text. Um, she's one eight three 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 two one scan is her number. And it's um, she's got a text box. She's on Facebook too. We have Facebook groups for doing that. So if people want to do it for themselves or a new career, it, it's quite viable. I've been doing it for two decades. <laughs> two thirds of my nursing career has been in quantum energetic field medicine. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah, I like I like people healing themselves, you know, that's the beautiful thing about having feedback back, you make your decisions, you're, you're in charge of your sovereignty, you know, and yeah. it's a little bit more accurate than muscle testing, because a lot of people that are lower dimensional or all their time acupuncture meridians could be blocked, they won't get a true reading when they're doing muscle testing and stuff like that, or pendulums even, there can be difficulties in that. So it gives yeah. me a little bit better uh, reading. The last time we met, Karen used me as a guinea pig. That was fun. I remember that. <laughs> it was. I have nothing to hide. <laughs> what, was your, what was your, this is kind of neat, but just in retrospect, Greg, what was kind of your, like, I know you could feel things. Can you talk to me a little bit about what happened and what your experience was? Uh, we're going to have to save that for another show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I would like to have you back on again sometime. Sure. Just, just, you know, in 5D live and one-on-one. -on -one yeah. And yeah, let's do that. Let's make I'll sit on my steam chair for you. <laughs> 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 I usually do. Don't laugh. You can see oh, McDonald's steam chairs. You'll see me sitting on getting steamed up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll have to get one for myself then, I guess. <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> of course, I'm not going to put chaga mushrooms in there. I might put like the, no, I'm not going to say. A different kind of mushroom. <laughs> Okay, anyway. I'll up. <laughs> yeah. this has been really fun thanks for showing up joining in informing us and keeping us updated on everything that's going on uh if you got guys i'll leave a link again for um karen's website in the more info section and also leave a link for the chats that we've had in the past